And this problem says, uh, given the values of the angle theta, uh, give the angle that they've given us theta in two degrees, and they've given us in radians. <coughs> Excuse me. Partner A, tell partner B the uh, formula you should be using. Yes, Rovin? Which formula should we be using? So there are two questions on your last quiz. Students who missed the multiple choice question just didn't write down that formula. So here I have radians, so that would be 2 pi over 3 over, can't see, let me change that for you, oh, this one. So always, always, always write down the formula or identity you're using. Radians over 2 pi equals degrees over 360. Radians is 2 pi over 3 over 2 pi. We're trying to solve for degrees here, and you'll have 360 degrees. <coughs> here I'm going to cross multiply. That's why I kind of want you guys to work uh, down. I should have wrote down the problem this way. Should have folded my paper. 2 pi over 3 times 360. I'll make 360 over 1 fraction equals 2 pi times um, degrees. I'm going to clean up the left side a little bit before it gets a little bit messy. Class 3 goes into 360 how many times? How many? 120. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. So these will cancel, and you're left with uh, 120 is our degrees. Raise your hand if you got that. Question number three, I'm going to do the same thing. It says, use the special right triangles to evaluate. So I haven't taught you guys yet the unit circle, but uh, we're still working on special right triangles. And I need this radian measure kind of doesn't make sense to us yet. So let's go ahead and just convert that into degrees and it gives us an idea. Radians over 2 pi equals degrees over 360. My radians is negative pi over 4 all over 2 pi equals degrees over 360 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. Here I have 2 pi times degrees equals negative pi over 4 times 360. I'll make 360 a fraction. Uh, some of you guys I recognize really struggled with uh, reducing fractions. In trigonometry, there's a lot of fractions. If you look at the unit circle, it's all fractions. Graphing trig functions will be from the unit circle. They'll be all fractions. I think I already showed you guys in your calculators. You can just do something like 4 goes into 360, or 360 divided by 4. That goes in how many times plus? 90 times. So 2 pi times degrees equals negative pi times 90. Remember, there's le nothing left here in the denominator. I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. So now I have um, cancels here equals 1. 2 goes into 90 how many times? 35. 
five, the pi's will cancel. And then I'm left with degrees equals negative 45 degrees. And that will help us launch into today's lesson, but cotangent of negative 45 degrees. Drawing of negative 45 degrees here will be new knowledge. We're actually going to learn that in today's lesson. Just watch this next part. It's more important that you watch than copying down. If you think about it, sometimes copying down doesn't necessarily mean you're learning. So you're going to start with where my pen is, and this is zero degrees. If you go counterclockwise in today's lesson, you'll realize it's positive degrees. That means negative degrees is going clockwise. Negative 45 degrees would be here. So this is a negative 45 degree angle. And then I can just draw my triangle. It's a right triangle. Well, what do we know about this triangle? Well, angles are never negative. Negative is just kind of the direction in which it's going. So if you took the absolute value, that would be 45, and this would be a 45. So essentially, it looks like a square. Right, And we've talked about how we're basically putting this onto the uh, unit circle, so don't laugh at my circle, okay? <coughs> and we were kind of saying how the radius is one. That's why I called it one unit, one unit circle. So they're saying that this is a length of uh, one. Well, the question is, what is this length and what is this length? Well, we know it's an isosceles right triangle because the base angles are congruent. What does that mean? Well, going across from the 45, this side's going to be congruent, and this side over here is also going to be congruent. So let's call it x. I think we've done this before. You can use the Pythagorean theorem. So I can use x squared plus x squared equals 1 squared. <coughs> and then from here I can do <coughs> uh, if I combine like terms what do you get 2x squared equals 1 and then if I divide both sides by 2 I get x squared equals 1 half and then to remove the power of 2, I have to take the square root of both sides. <coughs> Here, the square root of 1 is 1. And this is still in the radical, so the square root of 2 is square root of 2. I can't leave it like this. I'm going to have to rationalize. So I get radical 2 over 2 is my answer for x. And I need cotangent at this angle. So <coughs> it's saying start at negative 45 degrees, or this is our position. It needs cotangent. Class, what letters are cotangent? OK, this is the starting point. Jason over what? Opposite. opposite. OK. Those are the sides, so I could use that. <coughs> What's the opposite class? From here, x, which is uh, radical 2 over 2. Sorry, that was the opposite was radical 2 over 2. And the adjacent, which one's the adjacent? X or 1? X. X. So that's also radical 2 over 2. Radical 2 over 2. So expression over itself equals, when you cancel this, it equals what number? 
1. 1 is the answer. Another way of getting this answer for cotangent is which two letters? It's your x over y. <coughs> so your x coordinate is radical 2 over 2. Your y coordinate is this one over here. Remember, it's the referring to parallel to the y axis, so that'll be radical 2 over 2, and you'll get the same fraction. So using special right triangles, <coughs> I know this seems long, and you'll get to memorize the unit circle very soon. Um, but in some ways, deriving this is actually better than memorizing. In some ways, some people will say better than memorizing the unit circle. So you have a couple of options to evaluate cotangent of negative 45 degrees. You can either memorize that unit circle really well, or you can derive it like we just did. So the correct answer is negative 1, like Ducky just said. The reason why it is negative, um, Ducky, how did you... How did you remember why it was negative? Yeah. So your x value here, back in the coordinate plane, if I asked you a graph like 2, 2, that would be right 2, up 2. That means the x coordinate is positive and the y coordinate is positive. Here, the x coordinate is positive because I'm going towards the right, but we're going down. So this coordinate here is actually negative. So basically what you're going to have is x divided by y is a positive divided by negative will give you negative 1. So the angle in degrees, so they're telling me theta is negative pi over 4, and then I need to convert this into degrees, so then I'm just going to write down my formula. Class, what's my formula? Radians over 2 pi equals degrees over 360. There were two questions like that, multiple choice, on your uh, last quiz. Students, I noticed that missed the question, just didn't have the formula. So here I'm going to put this in for my radians. So negative pi over 4 over 2 pi equals degrees over 360. Let's cross multiply. I get 2 pi times degrees equals negative pi over 4 times 360. Over here I'm going to make 360 a fraction. Class 4 goes into 360 how many times? 90. So I now have 2 pi times degrees equals negative pi times 90. Notice how everything in the denominator has canceled. I'm just going to divide both sides by 2 pi. My 2 pi's will cancel. Pi on this side. Don't forget the negative sign there. 2 goes into 90 how many times? 45. So my answer is degree equals negative 45 degrees. Raise your hand if you got that. So basically you just converted the radians into degrees. In this problem, because we haven't learned how to evaluate this on the uh, unit circle, uh, let's convert this to degrees. So same thing. Radian over 2 pi equals degrees over 360. <coughs> I'm going to put that in for my radians. Thanks, Jason. I'm going to cross multiply. I'm 
I forgot degrees. The sign. Six goes into three sixty. How many times? Sixty. So I now have degrees equals degrees times two pi equals negative seven pi times sixty. I decided not to uh, multiply those because I can just simplify it. Divide both sides by two pi. <coughs> two pi over two pi is one, so my canceling equals one there. <coughs> Cancel my pi's. Two goes into sixty. How many times? Thirty. So my degrees are equal to negative seven times thirty. And degrees are measured in, the angles are measured in degrees. Okay, so that should have been a review. Now I'm going to uh, connect this to uh, a little bit of today's lesson. The part that we should know are the special right triangles. Okay, so 210 degrees, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this on the coordinate plane so you have your ruler and your calculator so we're going to learn today that we're going to start here this is zero degrees and if you move counterclockwise, so this is zero degrees, you go positive by going counterclockwise. But if you go in this direction, this is uh, clockwise, you go negative degrees. And the reason why it's negative 90 degrees is because you're basically forming a right angle there. Do you see that? So this would be negative 180 degrees is if I keep going in this direction. And if I go over here, this would be negative 270 degrees. And that's too much. I'm trying to get 210 degrees. So essentially, if you think about it, 30 degrees past, 30 degrees past, right here, this angle has to be 30 degrees. So 180, <coughs> and again, going this direction, it's going to be a negative 30. So negative 180 minus 30 gives me negative 210 degrees. And so I'm going to form a triangle right here. It's probably better if I like that. And they're asking me to evaluate cosine. But the question might be, what are the lengths on my um, triangle? Well, we're putting this on the unit circle, the one unit. So the radius is going to be one. Well, how do you get the other lengths? Well, this is 90 and this is 30. Let me zoom in here for you. That angle has to be what? 60. So we talked about then, this is really a special right triangle. This is one of the special right triangles, 30, 60, 90. The other one is the 45, 45, 90. So what I can do here is I can form an equilateral triangle. Let's do that. She's my ruler, I have one. Okay, so this would be 60. So if this is a length of 1. Class, how much is this going to be? This is also going to be 1. And then this whole side is going to be huh? equilateral, equiangular. It doesn't look like it. Not drawn scale, but this is also 1. Okay, pay attention. So if this is just whole length here is 1. Half of that would be what? 
0.5 or half. So this would be half, right? Half plus half equals 1. And then here I can use Pythagorean theorem to solve for the 60. Let's go ahead and do that. So this would be my C. I'll call that my A, and we'll call this one my B. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. My C is 1. My A is 1 half. And my B value is unknown. Again, to lose, not lose sight of what we're doing, I'm trying to find cosine of this angle. I'm trying to figure out the side so I can do the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So 1 squared is how much? 1 equals uh, one, 1 half squared is 1 fourth. So that's 1 half times 1 half. So it's 1 fourth plus b squared. I'm going to change the 1 to 4 over 4. The reason why I'm changing it to 1 over 4 is so that I can subtract 1 fourth. I get 3 fourths equals b squared. If I take the square root of both sides, I'm going to get b is equal to radical 3 over radical 4. Right? That's the square root of, and then I get b equals radical 3 over 2 is my answer. Okay, it's not my answer, but something I need. Radical 3 over 2. So to get cosine, class, which two sides is cosine? Cosine is, if you forget, just kick your foot against something really hard okay okay that's the elementary idea right you can still get the answer you're gonna get um, radical 3 over 2 over the hypotenuse which is 1 so our answer is radical 3 over 2 now I want to clarify some things another way of getting cosine is what x over r. Okay, My x values are going this way. Now pay attention. On the coordinate plane, x values are what? If you're going left, positive or negative? negative? So this really, remember how over here you're actually having both the plus or minus? And this kind of tells you this is the negative. It's the negative because we're going which direction class? Yeah. Left. And then if you're going up, that's a positive. So this is and then my r value is the 1. So this should really be a negative radical 3 over 2. So my answer should be negative radical 3 over 2. So I know there's a lot of new information in here. Uh, let me summarize that last part. We basically converted it into degrees. Uh, we drew a triangle from standard position. We went negative, so that goes clockwise. Negative 90, negative 180. I needed... Uh, 30 more, that gives us to negative 2, 10. There's my special right triangle, 30, 60, 90. To find my three sides, I use Pythagorean theorem. So I have 1 half, 1, and negative. That's just a negative. Radical 3 over 2. Cosine is x over r, or adjacent over hypotenuse. And then our answer is negative radical 3 over 2. And cosine of theta equals four fifths. Let's practice drawing this on the coordinate plane. We've been focusing on quadrant one. Just draw yourself a right triangle. It tells us cosine of theta. Class, cosine is which two sides? <laughs> or
x over r. So you should have your formula sheets out. So we're saying that the adjacent or the x value is <coughs> 4. That's also called the adjacent side. The hypotenuse or the radius is equal to 5. And if I apply Pythagorean theorem, I can solve for the opposite side or the y variable. Partner B, so partner A, what's the Pythagorean theorem in terms of uh, x, y, and r? <laughs> Leilani? <clears throat> so my r is 5, my x is 4, my y is unknown, 25 equals 16 plus y squared, <clears throat> subtract 16, class 25 minus 16 is, and take the square root, y is equal to Now, you have positive negative 3, and pay attention now, these are actually going to start turning negative. If you think about it, it has to be a positive 3. Not because it's a distance, but because now you're in quadrant 1. <coughs> For example, this order pair would be right 4, up 3. And notice how they're both positive, positive, right? That's why they're in quadrant one. Now they're asking us for the other six, or sorry, five trig functions. And they already gave us cosine. Omar, um, go ahead and give me one of these in terms of x, y, and r. x, y, and r. Uh, x, y, and r. 3 over 5 is correct. using x, y, and r. y over r is correct. Justin, give me another one. Uh, which one? Give me the letters x, y, and r. Y over X. Taylor? Numbers? Correct. Marisol? There you are. We already have cosine. Cosecant? Letters? Numbers? And Thomas. Numbers? Five over four is correct. So we used a right triangle to find the five other trig functions, one, two, three, four, five, given that it's an acute angle, which implies that it's probably going to be in quadrant one, and then we were using our x, y's, and r's.